Today's video is sponsored by Midwest Photo. Today we're going to talk all about my go-to film stocks. So these are film stocks I regularly use for a number of different kind of conditions, and I'll also be providing plenty of different sample photos for each stock as well. So maybe if you're new to film or if you haven't shot any of these particular film stocks before, hopefully this will be helpful for you. If you are new to film, it can be pretty overwhelming with all the different options out there and different size formats, different film speeds. Uh, there's a lot kind of thrown at you when you first jump into film photography, and there are tons of great resources on YouTube and Instagram, so hopefully this can just be a good resource for you. We're going to talk black and white and color, but we're also going to talk about 35mm and medium format. So for starters, let's start with 35mm color. Kodak Ultramax 400 is a film stock that I have used for years and years and years. It was a film I was using way before I ever even realized there were like professional or pro grade film stocks. Film stocks like Portra 400, Fuji Pro 400H. Uh, this is a film stock that you could buy at CVS or Walgreens. It's more of a budget brand film. But just because it's not a pro grade film doesn't mean you can't get great results with it. I actually reviewed this particular film in 2018. So if you want to check that video out, I'll put a card up at the top of the screen. Uh, it has plenty of different photos I made at Carolina Beach with that film. One of the reasons I probably love this film stock so much is because I spent years learning photography on film stocks like this, so I have this kind of bias for, you know, falling in love with photography with these kind of colors in mind, as well as like growing up, you know, photos of my childhood was often made on film stocks like this, this like more lower end budget options, but it just has such a classic color palette to it that I really like. It's not going to handle underexposure like some of your more professional grade films will. You might get a little bit more muddy shadows if you underexpose, but if you shoot this film, overexpose it a little bit, maybe give it an extra stop or two of light, and you're going to get really, really nice results. The highlights hold up really well, and you're usually going to be spending about half as much per roll as opposed to the higher end film. So if you're on a budget, this is a really, really good option. Now, unfortunately, this film isn't made in 120, so if you're shooting medium format, I'm going to recommend Portra 400, which no surprise to anybody there. It's a really popular film stock. Ask anybody if they know about Portra 400, and if they're a film shooter, of course they do. It's sort of like the gold standard right now for color negative film, but I think that's for good reason. More than anything, it's just a really, really reliable film stock. You can underexpose it and be fine. You can overexpose it and be fine. It's really, really forgiving. A good friend of mine, Binge Heish, has a really good video breaking down, basically testing the limits of Kodak Portra 400. I'll link that as well. Really, really good to show you how much range that film stock has. And if you do like it, it is available in 35 millimeter, but again, as opposed to Kodak Ultramax 400, you're gonna be spending about double the price. But this film is just so versatile. You can use it for landscapes, you can use it for portraits. I used to shoot a lot of weddings on Portra 400 and it holds up beautifully. It's definitely a warmer film as opposed to something like Fuji 400H, but I kinda like the warmer colors, so I tend to lean towards the Portra films. There's also a 160 and an 800 speed option, but Portra 400, really reliable film and just kind of a good all-purpose film. Black and white, let's talk about 35 millimeter. Of course, we're going to go with Ilford HP5. If you know me at all, you know this is like my bread and butter. In 35 millimeter, this film gives me pretty much everything I want in a black and white film for everyday life. There's great dynamic range, so I'm not losing detail in the shadows. If I want to push the film a couple of stops and increase that contrast, I can, but I'm not losing all of my shadow detail the second I do that. Pushing this film to 1600 is a look that I used for years. This has been my everyday film for about five years now. Before that, I used Kodak Tri-X and Arista 400 and Kodak BW400CN. There was a lot of different black and white film stocks that I kind of bounced around. Uh, Tri-X I used really heavily for a while, but as soon as I made the jump to HP5 about five years ago, I just haven't looked back and it's everything I want in a daily black and white film. In medium format, HP5 performs really, really well, but it actually performs a little too well for my liking. Uh, I really like to be able to see the grain in my black and white film. So HP5 at 400 on medium format, the grain is basically not even there, and I've pushed it as far as 6400, and it's still really, really clean. There isn't a ton of contrast introduced. There isn't much more grain introduced after going from 400 
all the way to 6400 which could also depend on you know what developer you're using in that process but let's say you're new to film and you're not worried about pushing and this and that if you want a good black and white film that has a good amount of grain and medium format delta 3200 also from ilford that's my all-time favorite black and white film stock if i'm shooting medium format it's incredibly versatile i usually shoot the film at 1600 so i set the meter either on my camera or my handheld meter to 1600 and then i just shoot the film as I normally would and develop it at 3200 like I normally would. This gives me the perfect amount of shadow detail. I'm not blowing out any of my highlights, but I still get that nice, big, chunky grain that I really, really like in my black and white. That's definitely a personal preference. Some people might not like that, but for me personally, Delta 3200, that is definitely my go-to if I'm shooting medium format. And those are my go-to film stocks. Those are the film stocks I'm gonna grab before I grab anything else. They just work for me, they're reliable, I know how to shoot them, I know what I'm gonna get out of them, and it just works. Uh, you can pick up any of these film stocks that I've mentioned today, or plenty of other ones, at today's sponsor, which is Midwest Photo. Talking about go-to film stocks, Midwest Photo has been my go-to camera shop for years. Uh, they're just an hour north uh, in Columbus, Ohio, so they've always been basically my local shop, and I've been going there for pretty much anything I would need. Whether I'd be picking up film, going through their used gear, like all the used film gear, or just digital gear as well. They carry everything from film and digital, used and new. They have a rental department that I use all the time for different shoots. And for a film shooter, they have a dark room in-house that you can rent out, which is just really rare these days. It's awesome to see. For any of your photo or video needs, Midwest Photo has you covered. So there's a link in the description if you wanna check out their website. But if you're ever passing through Columbus, make sure you stop in and say hi. That's gonna do it for today though. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, let me know in the comments down below or share your own go-to film stocks. That's kind of the beauty of film photography and really just the film photography community. There are so many different options that we have and everyone kind of has their own preference. So I'd love to hear what you guys like in the comments down below. That's it for today though. Love you guys. I'll see you next time.